Good afternoon, everybody. Today, we're going to be taking a look at one of Advanced Custom Field Pro's features, something that you need Pro to follow along with. So if you don't have Pro, you're going to need to get that to be able to follow along with this video. Now, speaking of ACF Pro, they currently have a Black Friday deal running from the 29th of November to the 2nd of December 2019, which is 25% off using the code Black Friday 2019. Now, if you don't have Pro and you're considering getting it, now is going to be a good time to get it, not just because of the Black Friday offer, but more a case of they're going to sort of change their pricing model next year. It's going to go over to an annual fee as opposed to a one-time lifetime fee, which is where it currently is, and they're also pushing the price up. Now, this is something I think is more than justified for what you get, but if you are looking to take advantage of ACF Pro, now is the time to do it. Okay, so with that out of the way, what are we going to take a look at today? Well, ACF Pro offers a range of extra features, and the one we're going to take a look at is the clone field. Now, what this allows you to do is to create blocks of meta fields that you want to use again and again and again, but you don't want to go through the process of recreating them every single time. Now, I'm sure there's lots of use cases of why and where you'd want to use this. That's something I'm going to leave to you guys, but I'm just going to demonstrate how easy it is to start tapping into this particular feature. So let's take a look by jumping into the dashboard and going through the process of creating these clone fields. So we jumped over into the dashboard now of WordPress and I'm into the field groups for advanced custom fields. And as you can see, I've already created a set of details. In the previous video, we took a look at setting up some real basics. Inside there, we've got vehicle color, engine size, and vehicle or engine type and vehicle specifications. So let's create another field group now that's going to have some extra information that we could reuse whenever we wanted to. So we're going to come up and say add new, we're going to call this reusable details. So the first thing we're going to do is create the different field groups that we want to use, and then we're going to create the clone, and we're going to assign what we want from our existing field groups. So let me just take you through the process, and it'll make sense a little bit easier once we've gone through everything. So let's create our first field. In this one, we're just going to call this vehicle price. Click underneath, and that's fine. We're going to set this to be numeric. So we're just going to say we want to have a number inside there. We can set any parameters we want up for this in exactly the same way that you would with any other kind of meta field you create with ACF. So other than that, we're just going to come down and create another one. So let's just close this down. We'll add a new field inside there. Next, we're going to put in vehicle warranty, our field name. Now we can choose whatever we want on this. If we wanted to make this a drop down list, we could do that. Select, checkbox, anything you kind of want. For this, I'm just going to keep it really simple. And we're just going to say we're going to put a number inside there. And we'll just add in another field. And this time we're going to call this vehicle location. So let's just drop that in there. Uh, text is perfectly fine. We can leave that as is and we can assign that to a map, whatever we want. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to assign these reusable details to a completely different post type. So we're going to say the post type is equal to, I'm going to come down and set that to be vehicle. So if we update that, we've now associated that with a vehicle post type. So if we come to vehicles and come into all vehicles and we take a look, we'll find that we have those vehicle details and the reusable details all set inside there. However, if we take a look at a post type, so if we come into normal posts and say all posts inside there, and we add a new one in, we'll find that we currently have nothing extra in there, no custom meta fields associated with this completely different post type. Next, you can come down and you can toggle any of these things on, but I would say don't worry about those because we're gonna use these slightly differently anyway. So let's just publish this. And now we've created another field group. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create the clone field group. So like I said, this is a little bit different to what we're used to. Let's just say add new, and we're just gonna call this clone test. Doesn't really matter, again. We can set the rules up and we'll come back to that in a moment. So we're gonna add another field in, and this time we're just gonna call this clone details. Now the field type, we're gonna change that. Now unfortunately this is right at the bottom of the list, so you can't see it, but the very, very last option inside there is clone. So we're going to choose that, and you can see that now opens up the clone options. So the first thing we've got is fields. So we can select one or more fields that we want to use or we wish to clone. If we click on there, you can see we can choose clone details, which is the post that we're working on right now, which obviously isn't what we want. We've then got underneath reusable details, which is one we just created, and vehicle details, which is the one we created in a previous video, which is already existing when we started this. So what we're going to do is we're going to say all fields from reusable details field group. 
In other words, all of the fields that we just created inside that reusable details field group inside ACF. However, you don't have to choose all of them. You can pick and choose what you want out of any of your field groups that you create. But for this example, we're going to say we want all of them. So we're going to choose that. You can see that now drops in there and says that's what we're going to use for this particular clone field group. Then we've got display. Now all this really means is how do we want to display this? Do we want to display it seamlessly so it replaces this field with selected fields? Or do we want to group them together in one of three different ways? Block, table and row. Entirely up to you. So it's up to you how you want to lay these out. It's more of a visual thing than a function thing. Now next up we've got prefix field labels and prefix field names. Now, this is something that I would recommend that you do use because what this will do is every time you want to use this in a different context, then it'll prefix it with the name. So when we want to reference these later on in our templates inside uh, Elementor Pro, it makes it easier if we're using them in multiple locations. So you'll see at the moment it says field label and underneath it says field name. If we enable these, you can see it now says clone details field label. And if we enable the prefix, clone details field name. So all it does is basically drop this in front of it. So if we create multiple different kind of clone uh, sort of meta fields like we're doing right now, we'll know we can separate them with our own existing custom names just by using these options. Again, I hope this makes sense, but hopefully it's one of those things that when you start to use these yourself and implement them, you'll see the benefit of using this function. Next up, we've got the rules. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a very specific rule for this for when these will be available. So at the moment, we're going to leave it to post type is equal to, we don't want post, we don't want post type. We're going to choose something different. We're going to say post category. So we're going to choose that. And you can see I've already created a post category underneath my posts using the categories option. And I've set that to be clone test category. So the only time this field group will display is when we choose that post type using that particular post category. So we can leave all the rest as it is. We don't want to worry about those kinds of things. But let's come up and say publish. And now if we come over to the post section and come into add new, you'll see again, we still see nothing inside there until we choose clone test. And then you can see we now got those extra fields in there, the vehicle price, warranty, and vehicle location. So we can set up any rules to show these wherever we want to, and then we can assign those inside our templates. So it saves us having to recreate the same information over and over again. Now, you may be thinking, well, I could kind of do that just by setting up additional conditions inside my meta fields, and you could. However, the benefit or the power of this comes in is where you don't want to use all of these, or you want to combine various different fields together into a cloned group. So let's come back out of this and go back into our custom fields. We're going to go back into our field groups and we're going to go into our clone test. So we're going to open that up. Once we've opened that up, we're then going to go through and make some changes. So let's just edit this and let's just take this out where it says all fields from re reusable details field group. Uncheck that. Now let's go and combine the, a couple of these fields together. So instead of choosing all of them, let's just say we want to put the vehicle price in. Then we're going to come down to our vehicle details. We're going to say we want the color and we want the engine size. So we're gonna just choose those and there we go. That's all we want to do. So we've assigned those now to that. If we update this, let that update and come back over to our posts, come into all our posts and add another new one. And from inside there, we choose our clone test category. You can see now we've got a combination of just those various different options. So it's a nice way of being able to pick and choose whatever you want and create your own customized cloned groups of meta fields that are being pulled from all various different meta groups. So it's incredibly powerful to use. So now that we've seen the basics of using the clone option inside Advanced Custom Fields Pro, let's take a look at how we can use this inside our custom post type for vehicles and then how we can edit our template to display that additional data. So I've come back into my clone test section. We're going to change the location and we're going to change the actual details that are going to be passed over from the actual post type itself. So let's come into our clone details first of all. Let's expand that out of there. And all we're going to do is we're going to get rid of everything bar the vehicle the price, which is one of the new custom fields we just created. We're going to leave everything else as it is. And what we're going to do then is we're going to come down to our location rules and we're going to change this from post category. We're going to change this to post type and we're going to set this to be vehicle. So now this will be associated with our custom post type of vehicles. Let's just come back up and we'll update that. Jump back over into our vehicles and we're going to take a look at all the vehicles we currently have. We'll open up the TT. And you can see there's our new field, as well as our vehicle details fields, which have already been associated with this custom post type. So what we're going to do is we're going to drop in a price. 
for this particular vehicle and we'll just update that. So now at the moment we don't have any data inside the, the actual template for this new field type. So what we're going to do, let's just take a look at the site itself. So we're going to open that up, jump over to our view of vehicles, and if we open up the TT, which is where we just add the price in, we'll take a look underneath. You can see we don't have that data inside there. So we're going to come back over into our dashboard, come into our, into our template section, into Theme Builder. And once we're inside the Theme Builder, we're going to go into our template for the vehicle. And inside there, we're going to edit that template now to include that additional data. Now, because we've associated it with this particular post type, we can pull in any of that extra data. It now becomes available to us, but only the ones we've linked through to this post type. So the other things like the warranty and so on, they won't be available to us because they're not associated with this custom post type. So what we're going to do, we're going to click and we're going to duplicate this just to make our life just a little bit easier. And from there, we're gonna edit our ACF fields, open that up, and you can see we can go through and choose the various different pieces of information. So we want the vehicle price. Once we've done that, you can see that pulls in the price details and we can now come into the advanced section and we can change any of the details we want inside there. So we're just gonna put price in and we'll just put a pound sign in, there we go. So now we have the price for this particular vehicle all set up inside there. And we'll update that, jump back over to our test page, refresh, and there's the price for our vehicle. So hopefully what this has demonstrated is you can create these clone field groups and then you can use them in entirety or bits and pieces and pull in whatever you want into the different custom post types, normal post types, pages, any way you want to use this custom data from ACF. And then you can pull that into your template structure and integrate all that additional data without having to recreate it every single time. So it's create, you can create a kind of pool of data, pool of meta fields that you wanted to use and then use them wherever you want to. So that's how we use the clone field option inside ACF Pro. Like I say, if you want to grab yourself a discount on ACF Pro, take a look at that Black Friday deal that's currently running for the next couple of days. And even if that's over with, I'd recommend jumping on the ACF Pro bandwagon before the price hike in 2020. As always, I'd love to get your feedback on what we covered in this video. Did you find it useful? Could you see a use case for it yourself? Do you have any questions on what I've covered? By all means, drop those in the comment section below and let's get a conversation started. As always, all the applicable links are in the description below. And my name is Paul C. This has been WP Tuts. And until next time, take care.